The ancient Persian wind catchers known as Badgir, or Badgir are one of the oldest and most ingenious forms of passive cooling in architecture. These remarkable structures served a vital role in maintaining indoor comfort long before the invention of modern air conditioning. They were developed over 2,500 years ago, primarily in Iran, ancient Persia, and parts of the Middle East, showcasing the sophisticated environmental engineering and architectural knowledge of early Persian civilizations. The concept of the Bajir reflects a deep understanding of climate, airflow, and thermal regulation. By capturing cooler breezes and directing them into buildings, while simultaneously allowing hot air to rise and exit, Baj created a natural ventilation system that made life bearable in extremely hot and arid environments. Their presence in ancient cities like Yazd, Kerman, and Bam speaks to their cultural and functional importance in regions where summer temperatures could soar above 40 to 140. Constructed with both practical and aesthetic intentions, wind catchers varied in height, shape, and complexity. Some featured single directional openings, while others had multiple sides to catch wind from any direction. Combined with kanats, underground water channels, or channels, they often provided not just ventilation, but also a form of evaporative cooling making the air more pleasant and humid in harsh desert conditions. Over the centuries, bajirs became iconic elements of Persian Islamic architecture, blending innovation with beauty. Although many fell out of use with the rise of electricity and modern HVAC systems, they remain an enduring symbol of sustainable design and are now being re-examined for their potential in eco-friendly architecture today. First appeared as early as the Achaemenid Empire, 550 to 330 BCE, but most architectural evidence dates to the Sassanid, 224, 651 CE, and especially the Islamic Golden Age. The roots of the wind catcher design may date back to the ancient Achaemenid cities, possibly used in palatial complexes or early urban structures. Though physical remnants from this period are limited, Textual and artistic references hint at primitive forms of passive cooling. The Sassanid era saw more advanced urban planning and climate-conscious architecture, laying the groundwork for the Islamic Golden Age when wind catchers became standardized features across Persian towns. As Islamic architecture flourished, so too did the sophistication of wind catchers, evolving from basic towers to intricate multi-directional systems. Regions used, most common in hot, arid climates, especially cities like Yazd, Kerman, Tabas, and Bam. These desert cities are characterized by, extremized by extreme summer heat and very low humidity. The ingenuity of the wind catcher system allowed residents to survive and thrive in these challenging conditions. Yazd, in particular, is famed for its forest of wind catchers visible across the skyline, symbolizing adaptation to the harsh environment. Each region adapted the basic wind catcher design to suit local wind patterns, materials, and building layouts. Wind catchers were crucial in desert cities where temperatures could exceed 40 degrees and cooling water or electricity was unavailable. For the era of electricity, wind catchers served as life-saving devices. Their integration into homes meant that families could find relief during scorching midday heat without resorting to mechanical means. In larger public buildings like mosques or markets, wind catchers kept crowds comfortable. The efficiency and reliability of this technology made it essential in places where access to water for cooling was scarce. How wind catchers work, wind catchers function using passive air circulation and thermodynamics without any mechanical devices. The core principle behind wind catchers lies in manipulating natural airflow and temperature gradients to create ventilation and cooling. They require no moving parts or external power, making them not only sustainable, but also remarkably durable and low maintenance. One, tower design, tall chimney-like structures rise above buildings, openings at the peach face prevailing winds. The elevated design allows wind catchers to intercept the breeze even above neighboring rooftops. The towers are typically built with local brick or adobe and their vertical shape helps funnel air downward with minimal resistance. Placement and orientation are carefully calculated based on seasonal wind patterns. Two, cooling methods. Wind-driven ventilation, 
captures and channels wind down into living spaces. Stack effect, thermal buoyancy. When there's no wind, hot air inside rises and exits through the tower, drawing in cooler air from the bottom. Often combined with canats, underground aqueducts, to circulate cool, moist air from water sources below ground. The incoming air can be passed over a pool or water surface to further cool it. Wind-driven ventilation provides active cooling when breezes are present, while the stack effect ensures air circulation even during still conditions. The synergy between wind catchers and canats exemplifies Persian engineering, harnessing, harnessing the Earth's subterranean coolness in natural air flows. In many cases, the base of the wind catcher opened into a cellar or basement, where water storage cooled the air even more effectively. Directional efficiency. Wind catchers could have multiple openings, one, two, four, or eight sides, allowing them to catch wind from any direction. More advanced types could be sealed or redirected depending on wind conditions. The adaptability of wind catchers made them extremely efficient. Multi-directional towers ensured that at least one vent would capture a breeze regardless of changing wind direction. Advanced designs had internal flaps or ducts that could be manually adjusted to close off one side and open another, optimizing performance throughout the day or season. Cultural and architectural significance. Wind catchers became a, sta became a staple of Persian Islamic architecture, often integrated into mosques, bazaars, bathhouses, hammams, and residential homes. Their presence in sacred and communal spaces shows how wind catchers were more than just cooling devices. They were part of the, of the cultural identity. In mosques, they helped maintain comfort for worshipers, while in hammams, they regulated heat and moisture levels. Their use in homes signified not only practical design, but a connection to environmental harmony. They were not only functional, but also aesthetic, featuring decorative brickwork, tile, and plaster motifs. Craftsmen often treated wind catchers as artistic canvases. Complex geometric patterns, calligraphy, and tile work turned these structures into architect structures into architectural jewels. They stood as symbols of wealth, taste, and engineering prowess, often mimicking the styles found in domes and minarets. Decline and modern rediscovery. With the advent of electric fans and air conditioning in the 20th century, wind catchers fell out of favor. As modern electrical cooling systems became, access became accessible and affordable, traditional methods were perceived as outdated. Many historic wind catchers were demolished or abandoned, and new buildings no longer included them in their design. Rapid urbanization often overlooked passive architecture in favor of modern comfort. However, due to energy efficiency and sustainability concerns, there's renewed global interest in reviving traditional passive cooling systems. In the face of climate change and rising energy costs, architects and engineers have returned to ancient models for inspiration. Wind catchers are now seen as a blueprint for zero energy buildings. Several universities and architectural firms are actively researching and incorporating them into new green construction projects. Modern architecture in hot climates is increasingly influenced by Bajir principles, even outside the Middle East. From California to Australia, architects are integrating vertical ventilation shafts and wind tunnels into sustainable designs. These concepts echo wind catcher functionality and prove that traditional knowledge can be adapted to modern, need, to modern needs across cultures and continents. Legacy and global influence. Similar concepts were adopted in Egyptian architecture, Malkaf, North African buildings, Mughal architecture in India, and modern passive cooling designs in the US and Australia. Each of these regions independently developed or adapted air catching technologies tailored to their environment. The Malkaf in Egypt shares a similar form and function to the Bajir. In North Africa and Mughal India, wind towers were often, towers were often hybridized with courtyards and water features for maximum cooling. These examples highlight the universality of passive design across civilizations. UNESCO has listed the historic city of Yazd, famous for its wind catchers, as a World Heritage Site. This designation acknowledges the global significance of Yazd's architectural heritage. The city's preserved network of wind catchers offers living proof of ancient climate responsive design, drawing architects, engineers, and tourists from around the world to study and admire this ecological wisdom.
Scientific relevance today. Wind catchers are studied in climate responsive architecture. Leading institutions and architectural schools include wind catchers in their curricula as models of sustainable design. Studies often involve wind tunnel testing and computational fluid dynamics to quantify their performance under various conditions. Modern engineers have tested their efficiency and found that a well-designed bajure can reduce indoor temperatures by 10 to 15 degrees Celsius without electricity. Experimental homes and retrofitted buildings equipped with wind catchers consistently show remarkable drops in temperature, validating ancient design through modern science. These tests provide quantifiable evidence supporting their broader adoption. Ideal and sustainable architecture for net zero buildings. Because they require no fossil fuels or maintenance intensive systems, wind catchers offer a path to reducing urban carbon footprints. Their integration into net zero energy buildings shows how ancient wisdom can solve today's environmental challenges while maintaining human comfort and architectural beauty. Subscribe for more.